Hi, everybody. Uh, go easy on me. It's my first time giving a presentation. So, uh, my name is Kyle Baylor. Thank you. Hi, Kyle. Hi, <laughs> Kyle. I do uh, poorly maintain a blog at ballardsoftware.com. I'm also on Twitter at Kyle Ballard. If you guys would like to stay in touch or find this in any way interesting after the fact. Um, so Faker Faker.js, let me go back just a minute here. Faker.js is a, a library to generate basically dummy data. You can generate things like addresses, uh, e-commerce information, uh, business information, strings, dates, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so uh, the, the library Faker is used to, to employ this in your applications. And, and why is that useful? A uh, well, couple, couple cases that jump to mind quickly are prototyping. So you're building an application. You get it to a point where you want to actually put some tangible data in there, not just <coughs> random strings of characters. You would like it to actually look presentable as if people were, were using your application. Uh, load testing, so uh, we do this a lot. I typically, my, my day job is working as a C-sharp developer. Uh, so we will build applications and then we want to stress test them. Uh, a good way to do that is to load up the application with you know, lots of customer records, lots of order records. I mean, you could do, because this is all automatic, you could do orders of magnitude. Uh, you could do several million records in the course of you know, a couple of hours if you wanted. Um, you could also use this for unit testing. So if you want to, uh, let's say you have a method that is creating a contact or you have a method that is sending an email and you want to, to, to vary the cases on which you're, you're testing that method, you could automate the diversification of those unit tests, passing in random data each time you run the test. Um, also useful for machine learning. Um, Part of machine learning is training a sample set. Uh, granted, it's not going to be real information, but you could simulate uh, the training model by passing in data that was generated by Faker. Uh, final case is presentations to a customer. Uh, so I do this sometimes where we'll demo uh, a site to a customer, and let's say they sell products in like industrial supplies. I could tailor the way that Faker is generating the products so that it looks as though it's generating machine equipment supplies and then load up my, my demo site with, with information tailored to their business. Uh, these are just a quick overview of some of the data types that are supported by Faker. So I'll show you this on their GitHub repo in just a moment as well. Uh, you have addresses. Commerce is like departments, products, order information. Company gives you everything from their business name to their corporation type to uh, their locale. Uh, images, you can actually use this to generate different images based on a category. Uh, you could generate like an abstract image or something that was business focused. Uh, you can also determine the height and width of those images and then use those in your application. Uh, names so for people, like with suffix, if you want to do it that way. Uh, system information, random file names, again, good for, for use cases for testing. And then your basic uh, data type libraries under, under random there. Uh, so I'm going to do four demos, um, basically highlighting the different use cases of Faker. Um, the first one is generating a card, um, which is something that's embedded inside uh, Faker is like a helper method. It kind of introduces you to how it works. Uh, the next one is to show how you can generate a, a lot of sample data, so e-commerce orders. Uh, this is combining several of the available methods that it has. It could be useful for doing uh, a training for machine learning for product recommendations. So if you have, let's say, 10,000 orders and you're creating your sample set of 100 products that were for sale, you may be able to put those 100 orders in, inside those orders you're generating, or 100 products inside your orders you're generating, and then simulate what the recommended products would be to a customer. Uh, another one is to show you how you can do all of this in line. So if you're just writing a console log statement, or you wanted to just have another use case where you were doing it in line. Um, and then also they, there is a hosted microservice. Uh, if you wanted to consume this from like a, 
a serverless application or something of that nature uh, and display the information that way, you can, you can leverage that as well. Okay. Uh, so the first one we'll look at here is, is that okay? This will be a, a little bonus trick here. If you change this in Visual Studio Code, it will update your whole display. So if we go here to the person card, so you can see I'm requiring the faker library, um, and then it calling this user card. And then I'm just going to output the, the actual JSON that gets generated from this. So really simple example. Uh, let me pull this open here. It did run it for some reason, it didn't display. So here you can see some basic information that was generated automatically. We're just serializing all this to JSON. Let me try to expand this. So all this got generated automatically. So you have the person's name, a sample username, email address, uh, street address, telephone number, website, and company. Another sample you can see here is here's the orders example that we were referring to. So um, you can loop through, I could change this value, right, to this if I wanted to. And what it's going to do is generate um, orders uh, following a, uh, the JSON schema here. But I can use these orders to load test my application. I can use it to train a, a machine learning model. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, you'll see as we scroll through the code, uh, we have, let me just do this instead of skimming over it so you can see. Um, we're generating a top level order. Then we're generating between one to two recipients for each order, okay? And we're going to loop through that and grab some basic customer information and push that onto the array. Then we're going to generate items for, for that order, for that recipient. And then we're going to push that onto the array. And then we're going to write it all to a file. So if I call that, see that was quick. And here's my orders that are out being output in JSON. So again, uh, you could do this for any type of information that you were you were testing or load testing. Um, and then pass that through whatever, maybe you have a data import process into your application. Uh, the next sample that we had here was the inline. Uh, so this is just kind of to demonstrate that you can call this fake or fake. And then you can pass in the, uh, the data type from faker and have it generate those automatically. And right after I run this demo, I'm going to show you their GitHub repo. So this, some of this makes a little more sense. So here you can see we ran last name, first name, suffix, so right here. Then we ran street address, right here. Then we ran city, state, and zip, right here. So if you look <coughs> over at Faker, here's their GitHub repo, Faker.js. And if you scroll down, you can see here's all their API methods. The surface area is, is pretty easy to understand once you see this. So it's, it's always faker dot and then this type, so address or commerce, and then the subtype, so city, city prefix, city suffix. So if you go back and look here, you would see that was name, last name, address, street address, and so on. Uh, and the last one that we had was the microservice example. Uh, so they have this service set up at Hook.io. So if you wanted to make an HTTP call to get this type of information, um, you can retrieve a name or a company or, in this case, an image. Um, you can also request a specific locale. So if you were doing uh, multi-language testing and you wanted your sample data to be in uh, German or a different language, uh, you could pass that locale code in there as well.
<clears throat> so basically, once we get the response back, we're just going to log it for my sake to make sure it worked, and then we're going to open it in a browser. So in this case, we asked for a random image, and here it came back, this one with this Technics. Uh, if we ran it again, you would get transport. So you can see there's different category types. You can change the dimension if you want to, like this, and it will change the, uh, the output, I believe. Should work. There it goes. So useful for testing images. Those can be attached to like a contact card like we saw earlier. And I'm out of time. Well, so. no, you've, 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 you've got five minutes, including questions. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much done with my demos at that point, right? Are there any like uh, browser extensions or something? So like if I'm actually on a website doing testing, like can I pre-fill a form with all sorts of faker data? Not that I'm aware of. But I mean, presumably you could write a Chrome um, extension yeah, and leverage it. Yeah, mic. So yeah. Okay. Um, you also mentioned doing load testing. So how does yeah. it prevent duplicate data from keep coming on and on again? You would have to do the uniqueness checks when you're generating it. I, I mean, I didn't get it to the point that I was seeing anything that was duplicated. Um, but you could do that if on on your own to enforce it as a key constraint if you wanted. Yeah. So like invoices, you random number generate them? Yeah. Then you want to check that you don't allow duplicates? Seems like that's another consideration with a random number. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you could, there is, there is, um, if you go down here, to, sorry, there's a lot in here. <laughs> you go down to random and then random number, uh, you can, say you know how large the number is as one of the criteria um, again the uniqueness check would have to be on on you um, if you wanted to do it as a unique identifier this UUID um, to verify that it was unique you could use that key as well. Okay. Cool. Thank you guys. Bye.